tuning into my channel and today I just want to share with you what I've been freely given and I hope that this can help you um, in whatever situation you are today, if you're courting, in a relationship, dating, engaged, I hope this can help you. So the question is, is it safe to kiss outside marriage? Is it safe to kiss a boyfriend or a girlfriend as a Christian? Is it harmless? Um, why should we or why shouldn't we? What is kissing? What happens during kissing? These are probably some of the questions that you're wondering. And I hope that this information I'm going to share with you will be able to clarify that too. So, first of all, let's define what kissing is. Uh, kissing is defined by the dictionary as to touch or caress with the lips as a sign of love, affection, or sexual intimacy. So obviously, this kind of kissing is not what I would say a holy kiss. What I'm talking about is not a holy kiss or kissing a pet or kissing a relative. I'm talking about kissing between a male and a female who are in love or who have feelings for each other or who are romantically involved or whatever the case. But I'm sure you get the drift. So that what that is what kissing is defined as. Now let's find out what happens during kissing because we need to know what takes place in our bodies and what's actually really happening, what's involved in it. It has actually been scientifically proven. I'm not making this up. It has been scientifically proven that your body psychologically and physically prepares you for sexual intercourse when you are kissing. Yeah, it's been proven. Um, you can do your own research and uh, double check that. So I'm going to go into detail on what that means and what really happens psychologically and what really happens physically to our bodies. So first of all, our lips, our lips, they are very sensitive. They are very sensitive because they are thin-skinned and inside our lips there are actually nerves inside there that communicate to the brain what really happens. In fact, we have nerves everywhere in our bodies um, and our nerves communicate to our brain what takes place, uh, especially when you are touched. Um, this is communicated to your brain. For example, if I was to pinch myself right now, uh, my brain is telling me that I'm feeling pain. Um, so the nerves inside there and the muscles inside there have communicated to my brain that I'm actually feeling pain. That is why you see people who are in comas, people who are brain dead, are not able to react because um, their, their brains don't actually communicate back to their bodies which, what's actually taking place. So we thank God that we are able to understand and we, our brains are able to comprehend and communicate back to us what's actually taking place um, on our bodies and inside our bodies um, so now when you begin kissing somebody when your lips touch and caress as a sign of love affection or sexual intimacy the nerves in your lips communicate that information to your brain and your brain in turn communicates back to your body what is actually taking place this is why you cannot cheat your brain you can't cheat your body. Uh, you'll see why you can't do that um, as we continue. So, your brain now communicates to your body, and your you know your facial features will start being tingly. You start to feel like hot flashing. Is or that you feel a bit warm. Your face begins to get warm and a bit hot. And as you continue kissing, your nerves are still communicating to your brain. And then your brain, what it does, it communicates back and then you will start producing a lot more saliva than you normally do. So you'll start salivating. This is actually a sign of excitement. The same way, if you see food and you're really hungry, you will start salivating. So it's sort of like the same reaction. But uh, this is because of kissing so as you continue kissing and as you continue salivating it goes back to your brain 
and your brain then in turn communicates back to your body and what happens is there are hormones that are now released in your body as you continue kissing or as the kiss uh, intensifies so these hormones are released in your body the first hormone is called estrogen the second hormone is called testosterone And these two hormones actually cause you to have caring feelings towards the person that you're kissing. They cause you to bond. They cause a bonding to take place. Now, as these hormones are being released, uh, your body is reacting. Your body is communicating back and forth with the brain. And now you begin to, uh, your heart will begin to beat a bit faster than normal. your heart will begin to race uh, sort of like an adrenaline rush and um, when that happens now your sexual organs begin to prepare for the next step and the next step is sex so the male sexual organs begin to um, prepare themselves to enter into the female and the female sexual organs begin to prepare um, themselves to for the man to enter um, her now this is a very dangerous place to be if you're not married it's a very a very dangerous place to be um, that is why you find people saying that it just happened you see it doesn't just happen because as you begin kissing, your body is telling you and is preparing you for the next step. So you can't say that it just happened. It didn't just happen, but it started happening when you were kissing. It started happening when you started kissing. That is why you find people who are in a relationship and they start kissing. They want to take it slow, but they start kissing the first month, second month, third month, fourth month. They're in the fifth month, they'll find it very difficult to not do other things. They will find it difficult not to take the next step because of the temptation that is taking place. So I hope you can understand that this is not a safe place to be if you're not a com in a committed relationship. And by committed relationship, I mean someone who you are married to. So in the same way, you hear people saying that, oh, the Bible doesn't really say anything about kissing. I mean, I don't think it's harmful. I think I can kiss my boyfriend. Or, you know, I think I can kiss my boyfriend. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not really a fornication, is it? Well, I mean, I don't know what kind of Bible those people are reading. I don't know what kind of Bible you're reading because, I mean, every answer is found in the Bible. The Bible definitely talks about kissing. Yeah, it does. And I'm going to share with you uh, some of those verses in the Bible. So, you know, when you are reading the Bible, you have to read it from a spiritual point of view. You cannot go in the Bible and say, you know what, I want to look for kissing. Let me look for the word kissing in the Bible. No, you, you, you can't read the Bible like that. The Bible is spiritual. The Bible is spirit. It's only understood from a spiritual point of view. So when we are reading the Bible, um, it's important to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. It's important to allow spirit of God to be a teacher and to show us the deep and secret things of God that are hidden in the Word of God um, that is why I'm saying that every answer is found in the Bible every answer is in there so I'm going to share with you some scriptures that actually talk about kissing the first scripture is found in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 It says run run it says run from anything anything that stimulates youthful lusts the Bible is talking to us it's talking to people like us who are not yet married it's talking to people like us who are not uh, yet in, in covenant with a man or with a woman it's talking about us people who are not married to run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts 
Now, the word used for run, when I looked at that word, I was so intrigued, like, whoa. It's actually in Greek. The word they used is a Greek word. Uh, the word run is in Greek. It says fiogo. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. Fiogo. So fiogo from anything that stimulates youthfulness. Seek safety by flight. You know when you are in danger, or I'll just say if a dog started chasing you today, a bulldog started chasing you, what would you do? Just, just try and picture how much you would run from that dog. Try and picture how you try and find a safe place to hide or a safe place to be in or a place so that that dog doesn't bite you. This is the same way the Bible is telling us. Seek safety by flight from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Another definition for fiogo is flee away. If we look at kissing, um, if we look at what is involved, uh, so, uh, psychologically and physically, we can see that it definitely stimulates youthful lusts. It stimulates you in a sexual way. It arouses you. It prepares you for sex. It actually is like an incentive for sex. That's what kissing is. That, that's what it's all about. It's not something that you can say it's harmless um, if you're not married. And the second verse that I'm going to show you that actually proves that it's safe that kissing is only safe for marriage is in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 4. This is in the ISV version. Swear to me that you won't awaken or arouse love before its proper time. This is what the Lord is saying to us in this generation. Young women, young men, you who are not yet married, you who are courting, you who are dating, you who are relationships, you who are engaged, promise me this. Make a vow before me in, in, in faithfulness. Make a vow with your bodies. Make a vow that you will live a pure life, that you will not arouse love before its proper time. I mean, looking at you know what, what we see scientifically you cannot tell me that kissing doesn't arouse, arouse you doesn't arouse love it, it definitely does that so kissing is, is definitely in the bible because kissing arouses love yeah it does it definitely arouses love it definitely prepares you for the next steps of sexual intimacy so this is not something that you can be experiencing if you're not married this is not something that we can justify and say it's safe to do if we're not married this is not what we're called to do it's not something that you know we should be doing as people who are single people who are not yet married so the third verse says in proverbs chapter 6 verse 27 Those of you who think that you can stop in the middle, do you honestly think that you can walk on fire and not have your clothes burnt? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to, to stop once you start doing these things. And I want you to know that it's very possible to be in a relationship and not have to kiss. It's very much possible. God will give you that grace. I want you to know that the devil is a liar. I want you to know that there are other ways of bonding with somebody who you're not yet married to. There are ways of bonding without having to kiss them, without having to sleep with them. There's so many ways of bonding. And I just want to share with you that for myself, I've been in a relationship for five years and we are still waiting to have our first kiss on our wedding day. So I want you to know by, that by the grace of God, we are where we are today because of the grace of God. It's not, you know, if you try and do it with your own strength, it will be very difficult. So I hope that this information can help you to make a better choice in life. And if you are ready to make a choice of
keeping your lips for your husband or your wife, I want to pray with you today that God will give you that grace to stay pure till your wedding day, um, to stay pure till your wedding night, um, without feeling the pressure, you know, being able to have joy, being able to enjoy the journey as well of waiting. God will give you that grace to enjoy the journey of waiting with your future husband, with your future wife, till the wedding day. So, let's pray together. Father God, we give you honor, we give you glory, King of kings, a lot of lords, and I just thank you, Lord, for everyone who is listening and who has watched and received this word. Mighty God, I pray for your grace to abound greatly upon their life, even now, mighty God, the grace to remain pure, the grace to save their lips and every part of their body, Lord, for their husband or wife, for their husband or wife, oh Lord God, just that you have also given me grace, mighty God, may you also give them grace and even more grace, oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, may you shield them, Lord, from the enemy, may you shield them from the plans of Satan, mighty God, may you deliver them from temptation, oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, may you grant them great wisdom, mighty God, Father, to apply, Father, great skills to apply in this journey of remaining pure, Almighty God, as they seek a godly spouse, as they are ready to join themselves with a godly spouse, mighty God, even those who are single, Father, I just pray that, Lord, you link them with your godly spouse, who will also understand, Father, who will not, Father, who will also understand, um, this desire that they have in their hearts to remain pure, fighting, to remain pure, oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that you have given them that grace. I thank you, mighty God, that you have equipped them with the wisdom and the skills that they need in this journey. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So, God bless you, and um, I hope you enjoy this journey. With your future partner that you have in remaining pure in. So God bless you and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.